Hi there, Play from Mindcode here. In this video, I would like to show you different methods how you can move game object in Unity. So, without any further waiting, let's start. Open Unity Hub, and please let's see attached project you can find in the description of this video. So, in the description of this video, you can find a zip file called example-project. Feel free to open this so it will be extracted. Okay, so I have here already extracted, so I will open the zip file and it will open it in a Unity. All right, so it should be very shortly open. It will go into Unity Hub. You need to have a version 2020.2.1 F1. If you don't have this version, go to Installs. Let's add here and let's add the version 2020.2. Okay. When the file is unzipped, go to Projects, click here Add and locate your unzipped project. So I told you it's an example project. Here it is. So simply open and it will open this project. You can see it here. Go ahead, click, a, click on this and it will open the project. I am highly encouraging you to code along with me. Of course, you don't need to do that. You will learn how to move the game object also without coding with me. No problem in that. Okay, so let's go to Unity. If you have a different, if you have a different view as me, just simply go up here, click here on the layout and choose your default. I'm using a default layout. Okay, so, so far we have here on the scene, let's open the scene. We have here player. We would like to move with a player. Okay, so how can we move with a player currently when I will play the game? You will see I have just a camera behind the player and I can press the arrows, but nothing is actually happening. Okay, so first of all, we need to create a script and I will show you how we can how we can move the player. Okay, so I will remove the script, remove component, add component, and we'll add here component, our custom one, we'll call it player controller. Like this new script, click here, create and add, and straight away, let's uh, open this script. So we'll wait until it's added. We'll double click the script in the assets, or you can add a click on the script in the component and this will open this file. I'm sorry for interrupting this lecture, but I would like to just remind you that if you are looking for the extensive course on how to build the games in Unity, then you can find such a course at Einicode Academy. You are going to build three full grown games in Unity, starting with the basic stuff and finishing with a fully featured RPG genre game where you can fight, explore and complete quests. So, in a case you are interested, you can check all the information at academy.eindcode.com. Okay, so first way, how to move the player, I will show you with the changing of the position. So let's go back to Unity here, you can see here is our player. I will change its position, okay, I will move this cube somewhere else. I will set the position of the player to be 0, 1, 0, so it's in the middle of the plane. And what we need to basically change, we need to access our game object transform and we need to change the position property of the transform. Okay, so simply we need to access this position of the X and the Z and we need to change it. So if we would like to move forward, we will just increase the, or actually when we want to move to the left or to the right, we need to decrease or increase X. When we would like to move forward or back forward, we will increase or decrease Z position. And when we would like to move into diagonal, we'll be increasing both X and the Z, as you can see here. Hold it, I can move diagonally and I'm increasing the both positions. Okay, so we need to just change this transform position over the time. Okay, so let's do it. Let's go to Visual Studio. For this, we have update function where we can uh, access our game object transform. All right, so let's do it. So we can access the transform of a game object, but first of, first let's think how we will get input from the player because we need to know whenever we are pressing our keyboard arrow keys or when we are pressing the arrows or keys as uh, WASD on the keyboard. Uh, for this, we have a helper function called get axis, you can get from the input. So I can store the results of this function into variable. Let's write here float, uh, let's write here horizontal input. You can write here input get axis and we will get here axis of the horizontal. Perfect, I will copy it, paste it under and here we will get a vertical input. And here we'll get the axis of a vertical. All right. Let's debug log this so you'll see what values we are getting. I will debug log here horizontal, all right, space plus horizontal input, and the vertical will be V and it will be vertical input. Uh, the value of it will be from the minus one to the one, depending which arrow we are pressing. I can tell you now. Let's save this back to Unity. We'll play the game and you will see what will happen. Okay, so let's play the game. Let's open here console in the left bottom corner. You can see both horizontal and vertical are currently zero. 
When I will press the left key, vertical will increase into the minus one value. When I will pr press the right key, right arrow, my horizontal will increase to the one. Okay, so I am getting minus one when I'm going left. I have a one when I'm going to the right. Okay, I will press the upper key, up key. So I now I'm changing the vertical is one. I will press the uh, down key or arrow down, and this will be minus one. Okay, so you can see how these values are changing. So the values are going minus one to the one, depending on which key I am pressing, and its and its value is a zero when I'm not pressing anything. So now you can imagine when you would like to change the position, we just need to simply press the arrow, let's say up key, so the the value will be increasing. So our vertical axis will be increasing one. And simply whenever we'll be pressing the up key, we'll be increasing Z position by one each second. Okay, so we'll be increasing Z position each second, and we'll be pressing the down key. So the value of the vertical will be minus one, will be decreasing by by one each second. And this will create a movement where we'll be pressing these keys on the keyboard. All right? So let's do it. All right, so uh, let's see the Visual Studio. Now we, have, now we know what values we are getting here, so we can change the transform position. I told you we need to access the transform position of this game object, and we need to override it with a new position. So I will simply write here a new vector, because a position holding these values into this structure called vector tree Vector tree is consisting of three parts, x-axis, y-axis, and a z-axis part. You can see these parts here, okay, this is vector tree. Vector tree has a three parts. You can provide a three values to it, okay? Okay, so vector tree, like this, and now we can provide these three values to our, uh, to our vector tree. So simply, we would like to provide our original position, right? So transform position x, comma, Transform position y, that's the second position, and oops, and the third one is z position. Okay, like this. Remove comma here. Okay, so now when we want to move, we are getting here values from the minus one to the one. We just simply need to get the, our original transform position of the x, and we need to increase it or decrease it by horizontal input in the case of the x axis. And in the case of a z-axis, we need to increase or decrease by vertical input. So let's simply write here plus horizontal input plus plus vertical input. And that's it. Now when I will press some arrow keys, I will be moving. But you will see I will be moving very fast. I will be not moving one unit per second, as I mentioned before. I will be moving a lot faster. So let's save this, guys. Let's go to Unity. And let's see. All right, so let's clear it out. Let's play the game. So make it smaller. Let's play the game and let's try to move up. I will hold and you will see I'm going super fast. I'm definitely not going one unit per second. I'm going much, much faster. Okay, so why this is happening? Let's stop the game. Let's go back to Unity and let's explain why this is happening. Okay, this is happening from one simple reason. We are calling update too often. Update function is called on every frame. You can see update is called once per frame, and we are calling approximately, I think in our case, if we can go and play the game, you can click on the game here. And when you're playing the game, uh, here is a stats window, on the right here, up here. And here is, uh, you can click on the stats, and you can see we are calling here 150, 120, FPS, this means frame per sec frames per second. This means we are calling our update function around 150 times per second. So ar around 150 times per second, I will change the position. Okay? Around 150 times per second, I will get the horizontal input of 1, and I will increase my position x 150 times. So instead of moving 1 unit, I am moving basically 150 units per second. So if I would like to prevent this, there is something called time, time delta. So simply, what I need to do here, I need to time this, so multiply this by time delta, and the time delta will give me a time of the complete of completion of the frame, of the last frame. So this will get me some super small value because frame will be executed in something uh, in very in a very small interval. So I will decrease this horizontal input by the time of the frame. Okay. So let's see. Okay, so time 
delta time and now indeed when I will save this you will see I will be moving this one unit per second okay so let's save this let's go back to unity okay let's play this and I will see when I will be pressing up key and down key I will move the start I will indeed be moving up up and down left left and the right Okay, so now it's definitely correct. I'm moving this one unit per per second. So now I have created movement. Oh yes, if you are still not sure about this update function. Okay, let's go back to calling editors. This time delta is holding very small value. Time delta will be actual value. We can count it on, on calculator. So I mentioned let's call let's count that we are we are running our game 150 FPS. So 150 frames per second, so one second divided by 150 times. So that's gonna be the time of the single frame, the how how this time delta will be. Okay, so this very small number will, will multiply by horizontal input, and this will be how much will move in this single frame. But when we will move it 150 times, this will be exactly one second, okay? So this will create this movement instead of moving Frame-wise, we'll be moving uh, depending on actual time. Then we'll be counting with the time and delta, delta time. All right, guys. Really, I, I hope uh, you you now got a better understanding of this time delta and the horizontal input. Why we are multiplying them together. So we can continue, I guess. And uh, what we can do now, we can also increase the movement of the of the player because we are moving this one unit per second. It's too it's too slow. Okay, so what we, we can do, we can create here simply public member variable. Public, we can call it uh, speed, but first type, type of this will be float, um, speed, all right. And I will multiply my horizontal input by the speed also, by speed, so I will increase the value of it. Now let's save this, let's go back to Unity, and it will, we will provide a value to the speed, okay? So I'll open this, I will go to player, and I will get speed, and I will say here six units per second. All right, and now I should be moving six units per second. So I'll go here, and that, now it's much faster movement. All right, guys, so it is working. You can notice one thing, guys. Uh, when I'm moving to the left and to the right, I'm moving these six units per second, but when, I, when I'm pressing the both keys at the same time, so left key and the right key and the up key, this diagonal movement seems to be faster. And indeed, it's faster than the horizontal and vertical movement, pure pure vertical and horizontal movement. This diagonal, when I'm pressing the two axes at the same time, it's faster. We'll explain this, why this is happening later, when I will show you the other function. Okay. So, let's get back to calling editors, and that was the first method, how to move the game object, how to move our player with the change of the position. Okay, so this is the first way. Okay, first way. I will comment it out. Oops, and now I will show you the second way, and the second way will be changing, calling the translate uh, function, translate method of a transform. Okay, on the transform, you have a translate method, and to the translate, you need to provide a vector tree again, but this vector tree will be not your destination pos position, basically, so you are counting with the current position of the player, but this will be the, just a change of the position. So I will create here, a new variable, vector tree variable. I will call it movement. I will create here a new vector tree and I will simply assign our change of the movement. Our change of the movement is just a move in a horizontal input. On the y axis, we are not moving at all. We are not moving y axis, we are just moving z axis. So this, that's our vertical input. And simply this, this will provide to the translate. Again, if I would execute this, I will play the game, I would be moving too fast. So what I need to do, I just simply need to multiply it by the time delta time. All right, and also don't forget speed. Okay, so m underscore speed time delta time, and that's the second way how we can how we can move. All right, so let's get back. Unity. Let's play this game, and we should be moving as before six units per second. Guys, so if it's still not clear, just simply click on a player. Here is our current position. I will reset the position back to the zero, zero. So we are starting from the zero. I'll play the game. 
simply then they are pressing our horizon, our inputs. So we are pressing our keyboard keys. Let's say we will be pressing. Oh, that's something from the last lecture. I'm sorry for this. So simply, when they are pressing some arrow key, let's say we are pressing the up key. When we are pressing up key, we are changing the vertical position by one. Okay. So let's say we are changing up key by one. Okay. So they will be pressing this for one second. Player position will be here. Okay, so then the position should be changed to the one, one, zero. Now, from this position, when I will be pressing the both keys, let's say up key, so I will be changing vertical by one, and also right key, so I will be changing vertical position by one. So from this position, I will go one here, one here, which the final position is this, all right? So I'll be moving here when I'm pressing the both keys. So this will be my final position here. Okay, when I'm moving one here, one here, one here. So that's how I, when I will be pressing these inputs like this. That's the vertical one. So one vertical and one horizontal. Here is the one vertical when I'm holding my uh, keys. All right, so uh, that's basically how it's working. But with the normal position, when we're changing normal position, we need to always override our current player position. With the translate, we just need to provide this change of the position. So just we will just say to the translate, move one up on the x-axis and move one right on the z-axis and this will uh, this will provide this value this will uh, this will provide this value this will this will add these values into the into the correct axis depending on our vector tree movement all right so i can clear it out okay so there is one thing i was mentioning uh, way before that when we are moving up and the right, purely, just the right and or the left, but we are moving just one direction, the move speed is 6 units per second, but when I will pressing the both keys at the same time, I'm going this diagonal, it's much faster. So why is happening? Let's press, uh, let's stop the game, let's go back to Unity. And this is simply happening because, I will show you first, I will debug log here. Lock, lock, uh, debug lock, movement, dot magnitude. This will get you length of the vector, of the movement vector. All right, so let's see what's the magnitude of the of the movement vector. One, zero, one be vector, okay? Or depending on what inputs I'm pressing. Let's go back to Unity. Let's play the game. Magnitude when I'm moving, moving purely to the right is one. When I'm moving purely left is almost the one. We can tell that it's one. When I'm moving up, it's almost one. When I'm moving down, it's it's one. We can say it's always one when I'm moving just one direction. As soon as I will be moving two directions, so up and right kick at the same time, you will see this magnitude of this vector is much longer. All right, you can see. All right, uh, this is happening because when we are moving uh, this direction, let's think of it, okay? So I will, I will draw here for a second, and actually the, the detailed explanation of this, why this is happening, I will be providing in the different video. There will be also mathematics behind this. I will be explaining it. You can find the link in the description. All right, so if you would like to, if you are interested to see the other video explaining why this is exactly happening, just watch it. But very briefly, I will tell you, let's, I will draw here. When we are, in, when we are going purely, we are pressing only one axis, so we are moving only right here. So our maximum value of our horizontal input can be one, right? So we are moving one here. And that's the magnitude of this vector. The length of this vector is one. So we are moving only one. Same when I'm moving only up. Ma maximum value of the vertical input can be one, so the length of this vector is always one. That's why we are moving the, the constant speed when we are moving up or the right, or the left and down. But when I'm pressing the both keys at the same time, so I'm moving up and I'm moving uh, also, I can change the color. When I'm moving also the right, I should use the particular color, colors, right? So I'm moving up one. So I'm pressing the both keys, I'm moving one here. All right. And when I'm moving also right one, so I'm changing both axes, the one, the final vector is this. Okay. All right. So final vector is this length here, the length of this vector here. 
All right, and you can see this here is much longer than one. So that, that, that this is value 1.414, this magnitude you could see in a console before. So that's why we are moving faster when we are going in this diagonal, in this diagonal direction. You can also count it with the Pythagorean theorem and you will get into the correct value of 1.4.4, okay, if you, if you are interested to see it, because this value of this side is also one and we are looking for this value. So c squared is equal one squared plus one squared, so you just need to count c squared equals two. Okay, so when you will, uh, you will compute this, this will be exactly 1.401, 1 1 and that's the speed we are moving diagonal direction. Okay, that's why we are not moving one as purely as to the right or to the up, because it's diagonal, length of the vector is longer than to going just the right or up. That's the only reason. Okay, and one more time, if you would like to see the longer explanation of this, watch the other video you can find in the description. Okay, so now we can continue back here. All right, and uh, when you would like to prevent this, you can use something called normalize on the movement. You can call on the vector normalize function. You can just simply call here movement dot and normalize function. What this will do, this will normalize the other parts of vectors, so magnitude of the vector is always one. So when I would now debug log here, movement.magnitude, all right, I'll go back to Unity, when I will run this now, the magnitude of the vector will be always one. When I will moving also diagonally, it will be one. You can see I'm not going to this 1.401 value. I'm always having magnitude of one. So it doesn't matter which direction, it's always one. So that's the normalized function. Okay, so that's the second way how to move the game object, how to move our player. And now it's time for third way. Okay. Okay, if you are simulating real world physics in your game, it's always a good idea, it's always a convenient way to use the rigid body component. Let's go back to Unity. And you would like to use a rigid body I'll simply click here on a player game object, click here add component and add here rigid body and now your game object will be reacting with the physics of the, with the, the physics of the unity. All right, so we have here some properties. We are not talking about this just yet. Let's just create a movement for now, okay? So let's go back to unity, not unity, but to coding editors and let's move the player through the rigid body methods. I'll comment this out for now. All right, uh, first I will rename this for evac. I will be using rather evac function here and I will get here a reference to my rigid body component. So I will write here private rigid body m underscore rb for rigid body. I'll get a reference to it through the component, through the, through the get component method. So I'll write here m underscore rb get component of type rigid, oops, rigid body, all right. And then I can move the move the player. I will be doing differently. I will also comment these two lines. Uh, for a physics, physics are computed in the not the update lifecycle function, but in an update, a fixed update lifecycle function. So it's a convenient convenient way to, way to usually when you are doing changes in a rigid body, you are applying some forces to rigid body, is to use fixed update fixed update and fixed update is executed at a fixed uh, fixed frame rate okay because your update function can be executed uh, less or fewer times or more times per second fixed update is always executed the same amount of the times it's it should be executed 50 times per second in my case in my case it's executed 50 times per second all right so we have a fixed update what we need to get here is also this we need to get here our inputs from the pressing of the keys we need to get here our inputs also, we need to get here this. I will copy it and I will uncomment it here. Okay, so we need to get here our vector tree. All right, but instead of moving transform with a translate, I can conveniently access here m underscore rigid body component and a function method called move position. And to the move position, you need to provide a vector tree. And that will be the same vector we have here. 
but now you'll be moving in a fixed update through the method uh, move position. So when you, you are when you want to react your game object with the physics, you will use a fixed update and you will use the rigid body move position. Now when you will save this, we'll go to the game. All right, uh, let's go to the game. Let's play the game and you will see when I will start moving the player, I will fall down on my face. Okay, now actually I'm falling completely under the canvas. Okay, the, the the one thing here, the move position is not working exactly as a translate. I don't, I cannot just provide here the change of the position. Oh, okay, okay. What I need to provide here is also my current position plus movement. So I need to get here my current position, which I can get also from the rigid body. So m underscore rb position plus movement. Okay, I need to provide here destination vector, not only movement, the, the, uh, the direction of where, we, where I want to move. So original position plus change in the position plus the speed, all right. Now let's save this, now it should work. Let's get back here. Uh, let's play this game and now we should be moving as before, but we will be reacting to physics. So you can see I'm already reacting to physics and I'm falling on my face. Why it is happening? is because my game object is just this uh, is not even is uh, the game object type is actually should be capsule okay so it's a capsule of course the physics are applied I'm not even I'm, I have to fall that's <laughs> that's that's the way how physics works when I would like to prevent this because I don't want to my game object fall I just need to stop freeze rotation on rigid body you can see here constraints and you have a freeze rotation here on which axis I would like to stop rotation you can just see here on your game object rotation in a transform. I want to stop rotation on X axis, so I will not fall in these directions. And also I would like to stop it, uh, stop the rotation on the Z axis, so I will not fall this direction. So I will conveniently just freeze rotation on the X and the Z. So toggle these two fields, freeze rotation, let's play this and uh, yeah, let's see. Now we can move through the rigid body component with a change with a function uh, move position. And now our game object, when it has a rigid body, can react with the other game object. And since I didn't freeze my since I didn't froze my y position, my y axis, when I hit this, I will when I will hit this cube, I will be also moving like like this, which is not very good. But also, if I want, I can also freeze rotation on the y. And I can now hit this game object without rotating myself. All right, so now I'm reacting with the physics of my of my scene. All right, guys. So that's the different ways how you can move the game object, how you can move the player, and move on the map. I am preparing to make more of the Unity videos. This is my first video. Uh, just some final words here. As I mentioned, this normalize function, I have another video about this. So if you are interested how the mathematics behind normalize works, just watch this video. Also, I have the other video explaining the parts of the rigid uh, body here. Okay, so I'm explaining all these properties of the rigid body, how they how they work. If you are interested into this, that, that's the th third video. You can also find the link in the description. Or in my, just search my channel for the Unity videos. I don't have many of them. Okay, so also uh, the other thing here I would like to mention, whenever you are starting watching my video, and I'm including some of, the, some of the starting projects in the description, it's usually zip file, so you just need to unzip it and open it in a, in a Unity Hub, as you saw in the beginning, uh, in the start of the lecture. If you like the video, guys, press the like button. I will be really, I really appreciate it. <laughs> all right, and uh, I hope to see you with all of this in the next lecture, and I hope you are enjoying Unity and you are looking forward to few future projects and preparing really, really lots of Unity videos. So guys, I hope to see you in some of my other ones. Cheers.